Hi and welcome to The Best Thing You Watch This Week where Chris from Movies and Munchies and myself, Ruben from The Ruby Tuesday, talk about the best things we watch. This week it's going to be particularly difficult because we watched a lot of poo. Did we not, Chris? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> I have one particular poo film to mention right now, OM, uh, The Battle Within. Never see that film. Your eyes will bleed. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Your comments were the funniest thing. I was going to go see it, and then everybody was like, who told you to watch this? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I watch it so you don't have to. Uh, we will be doing our podcast thing as per usual this week. Thank you so much for joining us if this is your first time. If you are a returning viewer or listener, thank you once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And on the audio part, particularly wherever you're listening to the audios, please do rate us. It helps loads uh i would like to introduce us to our new mascot what is this is a thing i'm using now for when i have really really bad films to review and at the beginning of one of my reviews this week i, I said <gasps> oh. my parents always said never don't say anything if you don't have anything good to say and uh that's the look <laughs> so i'll bring this mascot out when i need to talk about something really bad and i don't want to say anything and you know he can just he can just appear just out of the <laughs> hint right there of what to expect yeah 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 um uh, first on the movie quiz last week who who won that chris because there was no one on my but there was someone on yours yeah well actually we had two and um one technically and then one because of the way that you who you were going for right. so we had um where on earth that uh that youtube uh user uh got the day the earth stood still which is where that quote came from uh yeah. the, your first quote the original uh, then we had, yeah yeah then alien and or is it aliens mm, um it. what was my quote oh i don't know you'd have to oh yeah it's, um Get away from her, you bitch. I think it's Aliens when she's wearing the mech suit. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So, mm, that's maybe fine. this is not... That's anyway, fine. okay. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah. then Star Trek Two: Wrath of Khan. Yeah. But Nostromo, who also got it the previous week, mm -hmm. uh, got it Army of Darkness, which yes. is the which is version that you were going for. I was going for. for, yeah. Especially with the way I was acting it with the cough at the end from the... <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so good um and then aliens and wrath of khan so congratulations to yeah. both of you for nice. for knowing what they were that's i really that's thought the awesome. wrath of khan one was going to be the trickiest because it's qu quite an old film and you really have to have watched those films quite a few times to know that i i did not know that one well, you so you, you definitely stumped me on that <laughs> um okay so for this week's Yes, I'm excited. Okay. Uh, you know, I've got to get into character for these, Chris. <laughs> I love it. I think this is the best part. You... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Wait, I need a prop for this one. Okay. Oh, even here. better. Okay. Wait. Wow. This I is... really should have a torch, but so that should give you an idea. But I'm going to use um, my phone. Okay. Yourself. <laughs> okay. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. <laughs> well done. Well okay. done. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so you should... Oh, I've, now I've got to figure out how to switch my torch off. Great, good stuff. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. Okay. All right, that's the first one. Uh, do you know it, Chris? I, I'm 99% sure I do, yes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm just getting the right words. I have this list. You should get this one, Chris. Uh oh, no pressure. Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? <laughs> Wait, maybe it should be more gruff. Wouldst thou like to live deliciously? Oh, ah. see the the, the yeah, first time you did it, I thought I knew, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> okay, 
Okay. Uh, all right. And for the bonus third one, which I think I'll just keep it like that every week from now. Uh, it's okay. getting into character. <sighs> oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. <laughs> uh, I'll give you a hint. This is from a horror film from 1987. And okay. I don't know. I don't know that you've seen it, Chris. Oh, yeah. really? Well, I've never heard you talk about this particular franchise. There you go. I've given two clues. Okay. Yeah. So you okay. might have, but you've never spoken about them. Hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't sound familiar. So. Nice. Okay. Okay. Good. So there you go. Good. Let us know in the comments down below. Yes. Yeah. Ah, I, I can't uh, wait to see the guesses. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to. It. I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit trickier because it seems to be too easy. So, uh, that, yeah. Well, you can even choose like an obscure quote within a very popular movie. Exactly. And, yeah. y you know, that's. Eventually, that's probably where we'll get to some <laughs> random one liner. But he, where does that come from? <laughs> like, what? Every movie ever. Okay. Go, 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 yeah, go, go, go. exactly. I know that one. <laughs> uh, but, Chris, um, yes. the question of the week is. Okay. So, this is a would you rather. Right. Would you rather have Velcro hands or Velcro feet? Oh, what the hell? What kind of question is this? <laughs> <laughs> Who comes up with these things? Velcro hands. Or Vel oh, I immediately had a Tom Cruise with his gloves yeah. on the skyscraper. I wouldn't red. work with Velcro. What, yeah. Oh, what's brr, brr, brr. Red? Dead. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> red is dead. Mm. I think Valkyr on your feet would suck because you, you're walking everywhere. You get stuff stuck to them where hands, you can control the directions and you can choose what you want to use it. If you get used to picking things up with Valkyr hands, um, I just don't see the practicality in that. Like it's, if you could take the Velcro off, great. If you can't, then people are just going to get gloves to put over their hands so they don't Velcro anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Very yeah. true. Which makes them redundant. <laughs> well, and I'm curious at which end of the Velcro it is, you know, because one of them is like the mo the harder, the, the pricklier type. Yeah. yeah. At least on your standard Velcro, because that industrial strength Velcro <laughs> is like, yeah, you can't use, like you... you like I have it used to um, attach some, uh, what are they, surge protectors under my desk. And yeah. I like, you str like I'm with all my force trying to get it off. Yeah, some so, of them are strong, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Hmm. So what would you do? Uh, I would do feet. Uh, Why? Be well, because I could always wear shoes if I want to. So no right. big deal there. Okay. Um, especially because if I, you know, any of that, that's going to just jack me up and, and, <laughs> And think about wiping. I'm yeah, just gonna. Just, that I, is true. It just it sounds very scratchy to me. And but think about the back scratchy you could have, like. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I I mean, you could you could really exfoliate in the shower with you that. Really you could, know what yeah. I mean? But but my get my thing would be I would forget about it, especially in that first <laughs> week or something like that, and I would look like I would just been attacked by like a horde of kittens. You know, just covered in <laughs> scratches because I, I sit there and I you know when I'm watching something or I scratch you know just whatever it's anyway. <laughs> you might be right in that <laughs> you 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 may well be right I'm not sure there's a good answer for that though no you know I, don't, I, mean? I don't I don't think there is Chris yeah no it's, it sounds like a terrible proposition all the way around yeah but <laughs> <laughs> um let us know what you would do yeah Velcro hands or Velcro feet? Mm. You have to choose one. You can't just choose neither. <laughs> or would you like both? Now, see, if buildings were made out of uh, fabric, you dude, never, I would be Spider-Man all day You would never get long. off them? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to go for the cheaper Velcro so that I can actually, you know, that I might Damn fall it. off it. <laughs> Yeah. me down <laughs> oh goodness okay uh, ridiculousness is over should we dive in yes let's dive cool. in 
cool. to the best thing we watched this week. And I have one thing without a doubt that was the best thing I watched this week. And that has to be uh, the last episode of Stranger Things Volume 4. This is without a doubt. This is the best thing I saw this week. It was bonkers. It was crazy. It was too heavy. It was like it just didn't let up. And then when you get to the ending, you're like, no. <laughs> no <laughs> what what did you think chris yeah exactly yeah we watched we watched uh the last two episodes back to back and i mean it was just it boom 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 and the intensity of that final episode i mean wow it just kept going up and up and up and i found myself towards the the end of it where where everything is uh happening in different locations all at the same time. Like I was, I mean, I was tense. Oh, I yeah. really was. I was like, I yeah. could feel my heart rate getting a little higher and like, like leaning up and, and, and kind of laughing at myself while the whole time, because I'm like, this is just a show, but I'm like, no, I'm so invested in what's Man, going on. Like we were trying, Chris and I were like, okay, they're definitely going to kill some characters off. Who are we okay with them? And we're like, no one, these are all family now. <laughs> like they're all so integral to the storyline even the new characters from season four have to say there's a there's a clip in the upside down minor spoilers or spoilers it's out now so i guess just kind of that's your warning but i want to talk Spoiler about warning, certain, sure. so, certain points there's a clip in the upside down where gate and maserati and um ah the the rocker the the punk dude oh, the, eddie. Who's, eddie um they're it has to be the most badass scene I've seen in a film for so long. When he's, he's playing Metallica, Metallica <laughs> on top of the, the, the caravan and like uh, the bats out of hell, you know, you know, are, are coming towards him. And he's just, and I'm like, dude, this is amazing. <laughs> and you have the red lightning and the clouds in the sky behind him just like lighting up as he goes and it just, it cranks up and then you have Dustin counting down. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's good. Like that scene. My goodness. Uh, but like you're right, like the, in, in conjunction with all of these things happening at the same time. We're jumping from characters that we've seen for three, four seasons now. And uh, so we've got the stuff happening in Russia and they're fighting the Demigorgons and the, the mutated Demigorgons or whatever the Russians have been doing to them. Uh, we have the amazing fight scene that I just, as soon as he looked down at the sword, I was like, this is going to be amazing, right? Oh, I was yeah. just like, this is like the adventure moment. Our hero, he's, it, it's like... He's been tortured. He's been br when we saw him without his shirt and just the scars and brutality oh that gosh. he's gone through, and yeah. he's lost all that weight as well. You remember he was overweight, so you know he's just. And the thing that he was thinking about most wasn't being with the woman he loves, but all the food. Like you totally get what he's what's going on in his mind. But when he picks up that sword, and then then it jumps like to Eleven, who is in a makeshift bath uh, with salt. Can I just say that the the pizza guy, brilliant character, Argyle. yeah, Argyle. We need him because it's so in intense all the time. The levity that he brings allows you to breathe for a few seconds. Like oh we need God. Argyle. Like hashtag well, him and the, save Argyle. Him and well, him and um, him and the other um pizza dude. Yeah. Their conversation, my dude, my dude, my dude, my dude. <laughs> yeah, so That's good. It was like mirror dimension right there. <laughs> it's really back. good. Yeah, it's, so. it's very clever. So we get Eleven, who she's done an amazing amount of growth in this series. Not only has she retrieved her powers, but she faced her fears with Papa. You know, the whole episode yeah. of episode eight, nine, seven, was called Papa. And there's a reason for that, because we get that whole kind of backstory. And she figured out, and he, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm right, this is the discussion between Kay and I that we were having is that we think that he believes his own lies. So he actually genuinely believes that he was doing all that for Eleven. But Eleven figured out oh. that it was always about him trying to find number one, who was potentially his favorite or the, the lost sheep, the lost child 
which is why he sent Eleven into the dark to go and find him. Like, and that made it clicked, and it was like that makes mm-hmm. total sense. And he was like, "No, who's filling you out? You you believe in his lies now?" Uh, yeah, so there's all these ju- juxtapositions that they're going from one uh, group that is just breaking down. But for me, my my heart was shouting and screaming, no, when we see Max. Like, I felt it. Like, I knew it was coming. I was just, but the whole time I was saying, no, 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 no. Eleven's there. It's going to be all right. No, no. And then when you see the, I'm like, no, you can't actually do this we were we were talking about it after the after the show ended and i um you know there's been the chatter of who who could die who's on that list and you know the whole steve and nancy yes, yes and, just... you know and eddie and dustin they better not die and well and even uh, robin you better not don't touch them you know and it it was as i was looking as we were watching we started the first of these last two episodes the thought popped into my head of like you know, there's something that you always remind us of, of uh, Stephen King's, you know, Kill Your Darlings. Mm. And <clears throat> so I began to think of who, who would they kill? Who will have the, the most impact to, to the story? Yeah. Well, and think about, think about this season, season four, the character that has been the heart of this season has been Max. Mm. This has been her show. It for has, this yeah. season. I mean, we've we've seen other people going around, but Eleven has been, I mean, she's off on her own journey, mm. but she's been kind of off on the distance. And you get you get these great moments, but really, because everything in this in this season is happening to Max. I mean, she's the one that it's it's the horror show. So we have the first three <clears throat> kills. We see how horrific it is. We see the yeah. monster. We see one or Vecna. And mm. <laughs> with the three names he has, one Vecna or what's his name? What was the other one? I don't know. The, the whole slash name. that Robin yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> slash. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> and so Max is, she almost had a redemption story because we get to hear why she's been acting like she has, why she retreated, which is also why Vecna kind of chose her because he has this whole stick in his mind. He's yeah. choosing these people who deserve to die sort of thing. Um, and she comes and we're like, oh, is that actually true? And then when her ex-boyfriend Lucas. starts saying it, Lucas starts, I was like, no, you, you are actually saying that? Are you actually saying that? This can't be real, <clears throat> is it? So well done, those moments. Oh, yeah. It just gave me chills thinking about it again. That was, yeah, that that whole interaction, that scene um, where it's taking place in the house with Lucas and Max and and all that goes on there. I mean, it was Oh my goodness, so good. And just like on the edge of my seat the whole freaking time. And then pissed and be like, no, no. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of a better <clears throat> bad guy story arc in TV series than we've had recently. Because he, now that we know that the evil, it has always been him. Like from the beginning, from the Demi Gorgon, from the you know the the mind flare which he created. Well, but see, I thought it was the black stuff that he he discovers because that's what changes him. You know, see, when, he, when we watch him, he sucks when we, it in, but then he shapes the well, yeah, because but, of the but spider. See, the, yes, but I think see the evil though. While he is evil, the bigger evil is the the swirling particle dust thing the shadow i was wondering if he gave it sentience or um he gave it purpose purpose like this is what you can mm. do it's, it was just around doing stuff in, in his planet until he gave it purpose to say now i want you to go and kill and focus okay. on these guys and open this door and then 11 didn't embrace that so he found his own way with the clocks, which is why I knew Max was going to die, because I was like, yeah, there has to be a fourth. There's going to be a fifth season. It's probably going to be all about uh, that again. He's been the big bad. Um, which leads me to think, how are they going to do the fifth season? Because I know they said it's going to be sooner than... Um, it took to do season four so it won't be three years but it could still be two years which it probably will be but they kind of need to pick up 
from that moment where we leave our group because the, the sky is changing, everything's coming over, and it looks like it's like a big poster shot. It looks like stuff's yeah. about to happen. But they've said see, time's going to pass. Yeah. So that concerns me. Yeah. <clears throat> well, see, I see it as, I see it because of the time jump. I see it as they're, that we're going to pick up like in the middle of just crap going on. Like yeah, they've probably. been, yeah. you know, like it, we've seen the beginning of this opening. We know what it can become because we've seen the upside down. And so now we're going to be put into, you know, a few months of, of their past. <laughs> yeah. Devastation and the whole thing there. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm curious at what they're going to do with, um, with Back one of the characters. Well, right, no, okay. no, with Max, really. I, mm. I I think she's dead, honestly. And I think they're he, they're, they're going to use her as a bad guy, as a shell, because she's she's a body now waiting to be used for... Ooh, that's dark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is... I hadn't thought about that. Eleven I mean, went she, in. There's no <clears throat> consciousness there. So essentially, she's just a body, right? It's living. Then the machines are pumping it. There's no, there's no there's no reason they couldn't they couldn't write in that in the corner that eleven didn't see there was some sort of consciousness and eleven goes and you know massages the synapses and the, the, they start firing sure. and, the, and she comes back. But if I was the writers, I would write her to be part of the evil crew now because that, that would is, be devastating. <laughs> that is devastating. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. That would be just terrible. To, because then think about Lucas. Yeah. I, well, well, any of them, really. Any of them. I yeah. mean, all of them. Yeah. And to, Eleven to is devastated to... because this is the first time she's properly lost. I mean, they didn't yeah. win this season. <clears throat> they lost. They, every mission they tried, everything they tried just failed. And they thought they had won. And he was like, you've already lost. And it's like, well, have they? They're just burning you to Chris. That whole fighting was epic, by the way. Um, you know, in conjunction with like him, uh, Eleven finally like... Uh, what's her name saying fight and she fights and and she frees them the him on fire yeah. the costume design i mean it takes seven hours just to put the costume on he has a little a wee flap apparently um oh, you'd have to be yeah but he can't touch it because of the the fingers and the gloves so he has a, an assistant that has to help get his junk out to go and wee imagine that's your job like let me not look and also imagine someone else touching your junk while you gotta wear this I just thought it was funny yeah, it's like wow the, is... things, the things you do for uh... because seven hours of makeup and then ten hours of filming and then an hour and a half to take it off yeah so you, well, you gotta That's go you gotta go yeah exactly <laughs> when you hope you only have to pee yeah <laughs> What, what? remember velcro hands um, yeah i mean essentially that's what he's got though who's gonna yeah. uh, is that too far are you gonna wipe my butt uh, oh that's too far yeah, yeah. that is yeah. even with a bidet you know yeah that's, so i'm that's guessing that's you're too... drinking a lot yeah but not eating much at all yeah yeah oh my goodness no i um <laughs> i oh where did the oh you know i liked um the little Halloween nods that we got in this one, you know, the first, the first <laughs> bunch of parts, we got the, um, definitely some nightmare on Elm street vibes and, and throwbacks oh, yeah. there. Lights, but yeah. this one with, with not only, I mean, obviously the Michael the Myers mask, mask yeah. mm. but when they run out of the house where Vecna had fallen through the window mm. onto the ground, and then he's not there. He's not uh, there. At least the body's not there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, I mean, oh, that's, that's the that. first thing we say to a bet. He's not there when he, when he, yeah. And we're like, damn it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that was good. That was, yeah. yeah. I, I, um, this, the series, I mean, definitely worth the, worth the wait. You, you know, know we were talking about the, the break and like why they did that. There was someone else that uh, mentioned on, I think, on Facebook. Uh, on my Ruby Tuesday book, he kind of reviews these series as well, but written format. And one mm. of the things he said was, what this felt like was a TV event because we had that yes. hour and a half, which was kind of like a, a movie in itself. Because hour and a half movies, we have them all the time. And then we had a two and a half hour movie. 
and it really felt like it was something special that we were watching like the end of the season two big feature films really ending that and kind of setting up for the next one and i, I have to agree i was like yeah that it did feel like we we're watching something really special yeah absolutely hands down and i think this is why i think you know is <clears throat> i'm now spoiled like most people by netflix and i really appreciate the binge sessions i mm. don't I don't like as much the whole weekly releases because it just it bothers me. I don't want to wait. But I do believe that this season of Stranger Things could have benefited from a weekly release. That I think people would have carved out time every single week to sit down and watch this because you had an hour, mm. you know what I mean, or more in each episode. There is so much to ingest and digest from from each of these that i mean could you imagine having to sit with uh some of the ones where it's just like okay we <laughs> we just we're here with this right now you know what i mean mm -hmm. for a whole week we have to wrestle with the emotion that we felt you know whether that be exciting or or devastation and mm -hmm. and then come to the last two episodes where you have four hours together and give us those final two episodes and but yeah yeah it was good um before we move on from stranger things there was a moment when the walkman was crushed and max is in the air i thought after he'd, that um he had beaten that he was gonna sing i, I did too and That's i thought that would have been awesome like uh, you know his love is strong enough he, he might not sing it well, but she'll recognize it because it's been playing mm -hmm. and it's the thing from the person that she loves who is singing the song that she loves. I thought that would be a really great way to break it, but I guess that just didn't work for the story. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, yeah, that's that's what I thought was going to happen. <laughs> I did too. Yeah, I instantly thought that, oh, we get to hear Lucas sing now. And right. we heard him sing a little bit with, with Max when they were making fun of, of Dustin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're the never ending story <laughs> song, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh. Great season, great end to it. Now we have yes. to wait two and a half years. But okay. <laughs> Let's, yeah, that's depressing. Let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is, no. other than this, what is, because I know you had a met week, so what was I, actually good? Uh, it's funny, the, the rest of my stuff is not new, but it was new to me. Mm -hmm. So I watched this movie, it was a recommendation, um, and it's called The Innocents. Mm. And it is Norwegian. It is a, it's a horror. I mean, it is a very quiet horror. It's a, mm. it's a psychological thriller ish. You compared it so, to another film mm, I mm, love, uh, Chronicle. Yeah, yeah. So you have all these 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 young kids who have powers. Now in Chronicle, they they touch something that gives them powers. In this one, the kids just have powers, and it's not explained why, and that's okay. I like that part doesn't bother me at all. I mean, we we live in a world with superheroes, you know mm. what I mean? So to have somebody that has has something weird or whatever. Um, <clears throat> the, I think there's one scene, and I talked about it in my review, that it has animal torture, and it went on for way longer than it needed to. <laughs> Gosh. And it, um, I like, I couldn't do it. I like that was, it almost made me turn off the movie. Wow. Now, the rest of the movie is phenomenal. Did you and skip I, I muted it, right. and then I looked down, and I would look up every now and then because I could <laughs> tell what was coming. And yeah. then when I saw the first action, I was like, oh, no, I can't do this. That That's – my wife was almost in tears knowing what was coming. I mean, uh. she was just – she put her head in the pillow and was like, you you have to tell me – When it's over. When it's over, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. and even when I said, okay, it's over, she's like, no. <laughs> I was like, no, no, <laughs> trust me. It's like, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was like, it's over. It's over. Um <clears throat> I mean, there is a there is an emotion in that 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 becomes um, important, and so I got to see that at the very end of it. But it, mm. um, the scene itself is just it's horrifying and horrendous. So it, it um, I believe that you could show give the same character arc and growth in that moment that is achieved by doing it differently. You right. don't need to show everything that they showed, but. Um, the kid actors, all of them, to the best of my knowledge, uh, they've never been in anything. This is their first thing. Mm. And 
they killed it. I mean, it is a very quiet movie. There's it's more emotive than it is uh, dialogue. Mm. And you watch. You watch what happens when unhappiness or jealousy or um, those are probably the two of the strongest ones. Anger um, fester in especially in a child. Mm. who doesn't necessarily have all of the coping skills um, and then doesn't have, from what we see, doesn't really have any parental input um, because they they live in this apartment complex. Two of the characters look to have single parents, which is not a knock to them. I mean, they're doing their best within there, but they're, that means that the parents are working more and not just not able to be around the children as much as they would want to. Mm. And then the then the married couple that has the two daughters, they just send their kids out to play. So they're also unattended. Um, but you get to watch what happens when when you have all of those those negative emotions brewing within a child, and then they can do things with their mind, and how it how it becomes perverted, how it becomes powerful, and how if if somebody's bad or has a bent towards evil, and they exploit that about how like the limits go away. Like if you, if I can do something with my mind from a distance, mm. then you, I mean, I'm an, I'm un, untouchable really. If you don't know it's me, yeah. then, you know, I'm doing really bad things. And so it, it is a, uh, there, there are, there's a small, a small positive outlook to it at the end, but it is still, you're left with devastation. Right. So I mean, it is a it's a heavy movie to watch. So it's not a happy ending. <clears throat> not everything works out in the end. Yeah, no. That there is um, there is true loss that comes in this, and that's where I think it's like, oh, gosh, is it as devastating as the mist? I don't. I haven't seen the movie or the show. I've only read the book. Right. Or the short, okay. that's the short story, right? The yeah. short story by Stephen King. Yeah, I've only, King, I haven't yeah. seen it. <clears throat> okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I can't, it's, it is, I don't, it, it's heartbreaking. Let me say that. I don't think devastation on, because we don't know the characters as much. I mean, you think think about because we have young actors, if anything negative happens to these young actors, especially if they're not a villain, then that's pretty bad, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't, nobody wants to see something bad happen to a kid. Yeah, I mean, um, even and, in Game of Thrones, we didn't know the kid at the beginning. I think it was the second episode and he gets pushed out the window and you're like, dude, it's, yeah, you can't do that. Uh, exactly, yeah. Yeah, so there, I mean, unless it was Joffrey and we wanted, well, everybody wanted Joffrey to do Dude, die. you so, can do that. <laughs> yes, please hurry up. <laughs> Dang it, take it too long. But um, it's, I watched it on Amazon. Uh, it was for rental. So I don't, I don't think it's uh, available on any streaming platform just for free as of yet. It what came out in 2021. You choose the rental then? The, uh, if it's this, not new. Uh, the, it was, it was just a recommendation from okay. somebody that said, yeah. you know what, this is, this is a really good movie. And I was looking for something. Um, different, different, and not necessarily that is right now. That just came out right, you know, right mm. this second. Because um, I had never even heard of it, so I figured, you know what, maybe nobody else has heard of it either, or very few people had heard of it either. Mm. And so it just, you know, when I watched the trailer for it, and I was like, ah, that that looks kind of cool. Looks <laughs> weird. I'm I'm down for that. And so I'm glad I checked it out. I mean, it really was as as harrowing as it is. It was still really good also. <laughs> nice. I, I've, I've put it on my list, on my watch list. Um, I think it's, you, you buy it, you don't rent it. It's like seven pounds or something. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's very interesting. Love Chronicle. I think we've been waiting for a sequel for that for a while. <laughs> I don't, I don't if, want a sequel to it though. They've they've talked about the sequel, yeah, but I don't have, want yeah. one. No. I, li I like, you know, because it has an end. I also, mean, Dane DeHaan... He, the director went to do Fantastic Four movie, and that was horrible, so, yeah. You, yeah, oh. poor guy. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. It was just... It, they, I think I think to have Chronicle, let it be its thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you have... Unique these, indie superhero film. Let it be that, it, yeah. Exactly. With spectacular special effects. 
So which, good I mean, for an indie budget. Yeah. Yeah. And then to think about like, um, cause a friend of mine, when it had come out, we, we went back and forth on this all the time because this is, um, you know, it was, I think at the height also of found footage films. Mm. So, but there is not a scene that, that is not some sort of camera looking at it, not, and not the filmmaking camera, but it is being captured in one way, shape or form, you know, whether it's a security camera or cell phone footage or whatever. And it's just, it's so well put together that, um, you know, all the different angles that they capture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, definitely on my watch list. Uh, I'm going to talk about a film that came out this week. Uh, yesterday. So I saw two Indian films. One's called OM. There's something within. Um, the one that I, you told us not to watch. Yeah. Don't, don't, okay. don't, don't do that. Um, no, seriously, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it, the trailer lies to you. It says it's an all all out explosive extravaganza and it just yeah. isn't. They are great mm. action sequences, but slow mo just ugh, mm. it's just bad. It's just it's just bad. However, there is a film that came out on Sundance, I believe in twenty twenty one, or it might have been earlier than that, called Rocketry uh Rocketry, the Nambi effect. And it's based on it's based by the life of um, a scientist named Nambi who was framed for being a spy and then I think arrested in 94. And then he he's free, but he's still fighting the police uh, officials who falsely implicated his life. So it's 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 a real story that has real effect for the like the the, the people that I guess have grown up with that story. It has mm -hmm. like this is there needs to be justice for it. If I think I mentioned to you earlier, like the sort of thing if with Mandela in Nelson Mandela, you know, when apartheid happens, that's the sort of cultural relevance. So there's a lot of people talking about this film like it's like one of the best films ever made. And it's, you know, I think socially it needed to be made. It's a story that people have wanted to be told. Okay. Now, I think the cinematography is excellent in this. And I think the acting for the most part is good. However, the way it's pieced together as a movie is all over the place. For example, mm. the beginning does a sort of it catches you up on his on his life, on how smart he is. It's almost like a the Rocky montage, but it's longer than that. You get to see it. They try to explain it to you. It might go over your head a little bit. Um, and then we go to an interview where it's much later on. Uh, and I think the interview is by some guy that's quite famous. I don't know him personally, but I saw somebody mention about him, um, like in the in real world. And then they're oh, like okay. entering the, the actors playing Nambi. And so it, it juxtapositions like way older. And it does that throughout. And I would say that the first half of the film feels really like they're puzzle piecing, trying to catch you up into his life story but then the second half is more the spy craft and that's a more interesting story of what he was actually mm. doing how he actually did it so he's um trying to get certain pieces of what he has built out and how that goes about there's actually a little bit bond uh in certain parts of the film like that was really fun and i really wanted to see more of that and i think i think you chris would really appreciate the cinematography of some of the shots that you see mm. wide landscapes some comedic moments that i wasn't expecting uh, but it also is very informative. You feel like you're learning history. Uh, wow. And I think it's told in such a way that it's, it's not a documentary, but you really feel like you're downloading like schematics mm -hmm. of a time uh, that uh, you just knew nothing about. I certainly had never heard about this story. Mm -hmm. In a whole, I was like, this is fantastic because I think everybody does need to know, especially if you're Indian or uh, um, trying to know, let me check. I'm trying to think of which one this is specific to. I wonder if it'll tell me. Uh, it won't. I do know this is an interesting film in the way it's filmed because it's got three languages. Uh, it was filmed in multiple locations. There are like there's English speaking in it. Then there's uh, mm -hmm. Hindi in it and, it and it jumps to another language. It feels like a multicultural event, oh. um, which also makes it feel like it's all over the place does that make sense because you're jumping yeah. from one language to another you're jumping from scene you're jumping from time it just feels like the editing needed to be tighter 
Now, mm. I think people are going to be upset with Ruben's like, Ruben, how can you say that? I totally get it. Like, for me, if this was a personal story about Nelson Mandela, I don't think I would see anything wrong um, with that movie. I'd just be like, this is perfect. Everybody shut up and learn. <laughs> uh, and the fact that the, this is still going on and there hasn't really been justice yet. Mm. I would say if you're into this type of film you will enjoy it but it's not the extravaganza film that we've come to expect from these type but it is a well-told story with first half pacing issues i think is it, that is more concise as i can put it is it um <clears throat> kind of like a dramatized uh documentary yeah it's it's um a biopic really okay yeah okay but it's it's um it was on my list to maybe check out this weekend because it it was it was playing. Um, well, if you do, let me know like w- which which half of the film because I know some people love the way they put it together at the beginning, but I just felt like that was all over the place. But the second half seems to really work much better, uh, and it's not as long. It's not as epic as some of them, which I appreciate because <laughs> some mm-hmm. of those are just like so like three and a half hours long. Uh, yeah. This one is two hours thirty seven minutes, so it's still creeping that, up there. But that's that's hefty, yeah. Yeah, but it's still, yeah. Maybe I just didn't feel it as much. May well, yeah, and it, it sounds like part of it could be a cultural mm. type of thing, like you, like you know what I mean, like because you're coming in totally blind. I'm Absolutely, assuming, right? Yeah. You knew, knew me, nothing. Yeah, no, yeah, me, I would be coming in completely blind on this, so I am totally reliant on all of the information coming to me. And I've watched a bunch of documentaries where they they bounce around in the timeline, mm. which if you know the story, it makes sense. It's yeah. easier, you know, it's easy to follow. But if you're unfamiliar with it, it does make it a little bit more difficult sometimes to be like, wait a minute, where are we at now? Versus mm. just give it to me chronologically, put it, you know what I mean? Make it very cohesive so that it, pretend like I'm the the dumb American. Who doesn't yeah. know about this? And but I, again, it, it's I mean, it's cinema, so it's made for potentially a world audience. I would hope a world audience. It got but something also like you, a ten minute standing ovation at Sundance, apparently. Wow, mm. wow, that's that is really long. I mean, think long. About, I don't understand. Th- I, yeah, because you hear about those just can also for ten seconds. Yeah, and then yeah. move on. Yeah. yeah, what? I mean, that's ridiculous. Honestly, what does that I mean, do? there was what. Was there was Aren't one you that making was like the a, other film run over as well? Like, <laughs> yeah, that was like a twelve. I think Elvis had a twelve-minute standing ovation. No, I loved Elvis. I thought it was a great movie, but twelve minutes. I mean, yeah. if we were to sit here for twelve minutes and just not do anything, <laughs> get, I my attention span cannot hold that. I got to go, you know, and I can't. My hands couldn't take clapping for twelve minutes. So, exactly. Anyway, yeah. Huh. Well, that's good. I mean, I I. It sounds it sounds intriguing, at mm. least you know. Um, I'm glad to hear like some of the cinematography is wonderful. Um, it may be one po- that you you could wait, okay, to watch. Like I don't think it it needs to be seen at the cinema. I it's think. not a rush right out there because it's no. not a cinematic event, right? No, is I mean there are, there are cinematic moments, but <clears throat> the whole <throat> film it's just a good story. Okay, um, the sort of thing like King Richard, you know, you you'd watch yep. that at home quite easily. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Mm. So, what's next mm. on your 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 list? Uh, funny enough, mine is is also an Indian film. Hey, cool. Um, but mine is actually a a two films that I have to count as one. Oh yes, um, I saw you. I saw you reviewed these. Yeah, nice. Yeah, these had been Bahu Bali. Uh, one. B- you said that well. Well done. It, th- it, th- it took me a while, and I had to when I yeah Bahu? I had to. But you need to say it with the accent, Chris. I can't. No, I'm not going to offend people like Bahu that. Bahu Bali. Look, yeah, see, no. Uh, well, they but there were some there where they screamed. It was like Bahu Bali. Right. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Nice. Um, so there is Bahu Bali, the beginning, mm. and then Bahu Bali two, the, end. the conclusion. All right. All right. And <clears throat> excuse me, you literally <laughs> the first one ends in the middle of the story. Oh you, wow! So you cannot just watch the you, second one or just the first one. No, no, you, it, it is a, it is a combined, I can't imagine 
going, I mean, it's like watching Harry Potter, the last Harry Potter movie, Deathly Hollows, uh-huh. And we know that it was split into two parts, part uh-huh. one and part two. Now, luckily we only had like, it was less than a year yeah. between the release of that. Yeah. This one, at least according to the dates on IMDb, there was a two year gap. Oh my gosh. Between, yeah. I, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's not advertised. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is true. <laughs> this, but, but Avatar had an ending to it. I mean, true, there's true, true, true. You know, that, okay. True. So this movie, it is, it is a period piece and it is like just battle epic at points. Um, you, we spend the first part of the movie of, of one, um, watching this character named Sivu, who is, um, he was found as a child escaping from something and we don't know why but he is drawn to this place and so he finally gets to this place he meets this warrior who is trying to free somebody who's captive and because he sivu has fallen in love with this warrior he takes on her quest to save this person well when they get there there's some battle goes on and then we get all of the backstory Ah. and so they go backwards in time they do yeah to, to show how how all of this has come about and um it is a battle over a kingdom um you know warring like warring brothers and scheming there's political just like backstabbing can you you compare it to like rrr or like in terms of epic and big scenes the there the action yes there are a lot of those now it's by the same director as RRR. Oh, is it? Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <clears throat> so, so you're going to see similarities there. There is a lot of slow-mo um, <laughs> in there. You know, some of it works. Some yeah. of it made me laugh because it's like a dude just walking down a hallway. I know. And I, we, do, I don't understand that. This is due to epic music. I've just walked yeah, into the, the room. Hair, the I'm going to sit down on this couch, like but it's also going to be slow-mo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that part of it, I'm like, ah, uh, we didn't need that. But we did. yeah, it, okay. it's um, it's really good. And then we get into the second part, which still is in the flashback. Right. And so the the three two thirds of the second movie are flashback, and you get so much context for what's going on. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, the um. <clears throat> Again, the political scheming. I mean, like, think of Game of Thrones, Uh like all of the backstabbing and all the chess moves and everything. Now, some of it you see and you can tell what's what's going to happen and everything. It didn't bother me. Um, The the action is monstrous. Some of the CGI, a little wonky at times. It's always the case, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And and I, I liken it, though, that there are. I mean, first off, this was like 2015, 2017. So it is mm. a few years ago. Mm. And I mean, come on, we just had a recent, like this this past month, Disney not being able to de-age Hayden Christensen. So <laughs> I'm not, I, it is what it, it is. It, is you know what it I mean? doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It didn't take me out of the movie. It's That's, not it's so not terrible so bad. That, you, yeah, that you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. It was, I mean, there were, there were parts where it's like, oh, I could tell that's totally painted or digitally, you know, the, the background is, is digitally inserted there. Okay. Mm. Whatever. Like they didn't make this gigantic set and this kingdom for this movie. I understand that. You know what I mean? Not a big deal. Um, the, then the last, the final act brings us back into the present, Mm. um, from where we started at the beginning of the first movie. And you get more epicness in that, just the battle sequences, the fighting. I mean, there's, you feel, because you've gotten all this context, you feel for our hero. Like you, and there, and there's devastation that happens on a few of the characters, like because we've watched their arcs uh, over, it's, both of the movies are each, they're like two and a half hours each. So it's like a five hour watching experience. Mm. And it, um, but with that we are i mean you're along for that ride so you feel for a lot of these characters you're totally invested in them and when something bad happens to them it's heartbreaking um and you cheer for them at the right you know at the moments and you're like oh no and then there's redemptive arcs and then it yeah nice it's on it's on netflix at least in the u.s i think worldwide it might be on netflix and it's it's on the uk so it must be pretty much worldwide yeah 
Yeah, it had was, been on my list for a while. There, there's a couple mm. of different versions also. I watched yeah. the Tamil version, but I think somebody had mentioned that the Telugu is the original language. So if you have if you have right. ability to watch that one, I guess watch that one instead. I mean, but. I don't speak Telugu, so I don't think it matters either way. Is there differences in the film? Like, is it I edited think for, differently? I don't think so. I think it might be. It, it might be just the um, because you figure you're probably hearing the original actor's right. voice okay. so, yeah. in that. Okay. Like I didn't know though. I was hard pressed to see that it was dubbed. I mean, right. this one was okay. so very well done. They did a yeah. really good job. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure what I was going to talk about next. I have a couple of choices. So anyway, next week, I'm very much looking forward to Thor: Love and Thunder. Uh, mm-hmm. Thursday. I didn't want to go down to London because, as we know, it cost us ridiculous amounts of money. So we're, I'm just going to wait till Thursday morning and, and then hopefully go and watch it. So in prep for that, uh, Kay and I have been watching some of Thor stuff. So we watched oh, yeah. Thor. We watched Thor: The Dark World. Uh, we watched Avengers because after Thor, you kind of need to watch Avengers because uh, the whole of Avengers is Loki um, mm-hmm. wrecking havoc with the can say the Illuminati, but that's not who they are. The those aliens, Chitauri. Chitauri, thank you. The, the Illuminati, yeah. <laughs> um, and we're going to work our way. It was very interesting, actually, trying to figure out how much you can't just watch Thor's movies. You watch Thor Ragnarok, and after Ragnarok finishes, um, it finishes at the beginning of Infinity War, the, the mm-hmm. two parts, and so then you got to watch what happens to Thor because his whole arc in Thor and Endgame are massive what happens to that character, which yeah. leads us to the beginning of, of Thor, Love and Thunder. So anyway, so we're halfway there. I'm not sure we're going to rewatch um, Loki because I've, I've watched oh, that yeah. recently um, and I don't even know if Loki's going to appear in Love and Thunder. Yeah, I haven't I seen any artwork to do, to do mm-hmm. with that. So, um, But he's never dead, is he? He's just... <laughs> he's in some dim- yeah. dimension somewhere. But what was surprised by... <laughs> is Thor, the first film, is still good. Um, Because you never know. You watch it so many times. It's like, is this this going to have age? Is this not as good as I remember? Am I not going to enjoy it as much? You you, you go and watching these again. And it's still tight. It's still a really good origin story. It's it's one of the first times we've seen in the MCU another planet, and they start the movie off like, like off world it's not earth it's you know it's not Mm. iron man it's not captain america it's not you know on earth somewhere but we're getting to see asgard and the nine realms and it really gives us an idea of oh this is a much bigger universe than superheroes it's great and then the dark world i don't think it deserves the all the hate it gets there's a lot of moments in that film that actually really work I really wish they'd done the dark owls some justice because i I just felt like there's so much more Mm. story in there that they just just hasn't done well it was an interesting it was interesting to see the relationship change between um odin and thor as well they've come past it he's learned a lot he's he doesn't actually want to be um on the throne anymore and loki still wants to be on the throne so there's that change in dynamic uh and then that is where we start seeing thor's world start crumbling because that's the part where we see his mother die and it's like it's it's a it's a big moment for that character because I think that's the moment where they start writing him, where his psyche starts breaking. He, he you see him start changing and start to try and deal with the fact that you know things are just he he might be the god of thunder, but there are so many more powerful beings than him. Uh, even fighting with the Avengers on Earth, you see him starting to realize that this is he can't fix everything just with strength. Yeah. Um, which I think is a big learning curve for him. So we've been watching those. Uh, very interesting to see that they still hold up. I think the weakest of the three that we've watched was the Avengers. That aged somewhat. Uh, oh, the characters really? the characters that we've seen have come such a long way since then oh, that yeah. how they act at the beginning, you're just like, oh, you're, st- you're still like that. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the action is, is fine. The action sequence at the end is great. It takes a long mm. time to get there. you still got to go through the whole Avengers not being assembled. They're just arguing with each other. 
Loki messes with them. That's like an hour and 15 minutes. And then you get 20 minutes of action sequence at the end of them fighting the Chitauri and Iron Man doing his thing. But most of the film is just them trying to assemble. The Battle of New York is only like 20 minutes? Yeah, it's not as long as you think it is. Yeah. It's well, more funny like they get to that bit where they finally come together. They have a plan. And, you know, Hulk smash. <laughs> uh the epic moment that that's that's my trick i'm always angry yeah smash well because that's that's funny because like then you you go to end game and that battle is an hour long it's an hour long battle yeah <laughs> we've come a long way since then it might be longer than 15 minutes but there's stuff that happens in between i guess that they cut to so some of the characters mm. in the battle are doing different things and different locations but i think sure. that the proper ending battle is not very long. Mm, uh, okay. And then Tony, Tony gets his PTSD from that moment. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you know, it takes two films to learn how to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that, that's been a lot of fun. That's what we've been up to this week. Kind of catching up on Thor for, for Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, hopefully we'll be ready next week. Nice. Well, yeah. and, and uh, Ragnarok is still your... Still my number one. Yeah. In an MCU movie. Yeah. Okay. I, I am wondering if like it'll be pushed over from this one. I've heard very mixed reviews for I Love and Thunder, to. which yeah. is good because Ragnarok had the same people were like, Oh, this is way too much comedy. What are you doing? You're ruining it. And for me, that was like, you guys haven't read uh Planet Hulk. You haven't seen some of the stuff that goes on with Thor. And the levity, because his story is so dark, is actually mm-hmm. really sad. Uh, you need that. Yep. So, I, so I'm not really, I'm really looking forward to it. So we'll see. Nice. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I am too. I uh, Thursday evening, nice. we're going as a family to yeah, yeah. to see it. So, yeah, yeah. I'm mm. nice. Nice. What's, so what's right. next on your list? Uh, I don't have anything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Do you I'll have anything on, else? I'll just carry on talking okay. then. Okay. Cool. Uh, there is an anime called Bastard Heavy Metal Dark Fantasy that I think everybody needs to see with their families. It's family <laughs> friendly. <laughs> Stop your lies. Stop your lies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so I did have some comments saying, Ruben, you you still haven't seen many adult anime yet because this is tame to compare to, the, to those. And I was like, really? Because... I was showing you some clips this week of like anime yeah. called Legend of the Overfiend, and I was like, mm-hmm. definitely watch that with your family, because uh, that's pretty out there. But this one, I was really glad that they stuck to the manga. Like, I think that's the big, the big issue is that so many times they are scared of adapting something. If you're going to do it, do it right, mm-hmm. and it has a huge fan base. It's like 30 million uh, manga copies have been sold. Like, it's 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 a huge IP. So if they were going to do it, they're going to have to do it right. Now, as far as I'm aware, they have kept to it mostly, but they've still they've still shied away from some of the stuff like, yeah, we can't show that. We can't do that. Oh. <laughs> uh, so it still has some stuff. If you want to see it, the nakedness in all its glory, go, go and read the manga. But it is basically a character that is a bad guy, the bastard. He... <sighs> Bastard is a very powerful entity that uh, gets re well gets synced to a little kid um, who's a really nice kid. So instead of him being a bastard, he spends 14 years with his soul combined with this kid. So it kind of mm. changes him. So he comes out, he, he transforms with a kiss. So funny. Uh, and if you kiss him again, he goes back to being a kid for the time being or, or while the 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 the, the shackle is broken but they need this evil dude to fight other evil dudes it's like you, you fight your enemy with enemy fight fire with fire sort of thing mm-hmm. uh, gotcha. and it's all wizards and wizardry and it's so classic anime because they say what they're gonna do or they say they move like it's like i choose you pokemon use fireball you know it, it's it's that sort of thing i'm using this sort of spell now get ready it's like <laughs> announcing to your enemy exactly what you're gonna do <laughs> anime does so much of this i always shake away like, why 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 do that that's not gonna help you uh, oh yeah you think that's your strongest move now i'm gonna use my truck move come forth dragon and use sword attack I'm like, okay <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but the fighting was great 
Uh, mm. The action scenes are beautifully done, nicely animated. The voice work on both the original and the dubbing are actually very good. And the story has quite a clear idea like of how much they want to tell in the story. The thing is, it is left on a massive cliffhanger. Uh, there's two parts. And apparently the second part is coming this year. So we don't have to wait that long, oh. thankfully. Okay. Because sometimes with Netflix, it can be like three years before you get the next part. And you're like, or and then it's canceled. What? Yeah, or it's canceled. <laughs> I saw a number of things canceled this week. Um, actually, uh, Time Traveler's mm-hmm. Wife, that was canceled. I was very annoyed. Oh, but, that's HBO, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Anyway, uh, yeah, so adult, definitely for adults. Yeah. Don't watch with your family around pretty pervy uh classic anime old school think ninja scroll legends of the overfiend uh, i think those old 80s 90s anime that uh really kind of pushed the, the boundary of what you were seeing at the time that your little teen kids were like whoa can they show that oh they can cool 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 cool, cool. lots of blood and guts and, and gore uh nice. it's the sort of anime that, y- that like young teens were be snuck into the room mm. like watch quietly and going this is so cool uh, and also, if you get caught, you're in trouble, right? <laughs> you're grounded. <laughs> what is this? And the parents always pick the worst absolute moment to come in. The timing oh, of, course, of yeah. parents is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was still fun. I enjoyed it. So, nice. yes. Yeah. Right on. Very cool. That's uh, that's everything, because the, the rest I watched, which was a lot, which I'm surprised you didn't talk about, because I thought maybe you were going to like the new Disney princess movie the princess because you were really excited to ruben i'm excited to watch this one but i noticed you didn't uh you didn't say anything chris no you didn't, no you didn't mention it, chris. I'm, I'm gonna be posting my review well it'll come out before this podcast does but um right yeah the so I saw that it was announced, and I was like, oh, I'm not sure about this. And then I watched the trailer, and I was like, oh, hello, wait a minute. Yeah, we both, we both went, (laughs) yeah, that looks fun. Yep, and and then I watched it, and (laughs) when there is action, I was enjoying the movie. Um, There are some, there are times where they do a lot of quick cuts, but there are some where they don't, I mean, the the camera's right there, it's a continuous take, yeah, Yeah, just a lot of fun, immersive, I mean, it's really, it takes place in one setting, like, she's in a tower, that's all it is, you know what I mean, and trying to escape from it. in reverse. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it, it... Like that didn't bother me. I like I had fun with that. I was entertained. It was only ninety minutes, so yep. there you go. You've so, got that yep. working for you. Um, the story itself, though, is absolute poo. I just I don't even care. I mean, I couldn't, the, I couldn't stand the the British bad henchmen either. They were so over the top. Go blimey in it. Like, d- oh, dude, it just it was well, so even Dominic cringe. Cooper. Was Dominic like, Pre- Cooper, dude? who's like preacher, as like my favorite yeah. adapted, brilliant. I was just like, who gave you your lines? Because you were just phoning it in for sure. Like this is awful. <laughs> well, the acting, I think, all the way around was just yeah. terrible. Yeah, I yeah. So the only reason to watch is from the action, and I and I again, I thought the action was a lot of fun, and luckily they put a lot of action in there, yeah. so that it, there's there's not a lot of downtime. There are some moments of downtime in there, but it it sustained me, like I could I could put up with it. My wife had she had checked out. She was like, she and, and my daughter in law both had. They were like, this is just absolute trash. What are we watching <laughs> this? There's no story. I don't care about the characters. I don't. Yep. And I'm like, well, yeah, okay, sure. I I I think I cared about the trainer more. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She was I wouldn't she was awesome too. She was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There were was... some action scenes that I thought were ridiculous though. There was some just nonsense. I don't know if you caught it, but there's one henchman that there were three steps and he does a flip down the steps. Yes. Yes. And I, was I just laughed. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Walk yeah. down he, he the was, steps. Yeah, as he was coming around the t- around the corner. <laughs> flip <Yeah>. no. I <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why? Why? <clears throat> Stop yeah, it. <clears throat> There's another well, bit when, on the outside where the, the, the trainer, she's got like her double swords and these two guys run at her. They hit the swords and do a backflip. Like she's barely touched them and they've just gone blank and they do this 
and then yep. they're knocked out and i'm like what what just happened <laughs> well and when the princess sneaks in um into the room she's like she went through the sideways passage like between the walls and everything she sneaks into the room where it's filled with all of these soldiers and she does this roll behind to get to behind the chair and you're like first off you're wearing white so this is a huge Ugh. movement that you just did would draw like everybody's eye saw you. <laughs> just, just. it's like walking into a movie theater <laughs> like you're the last person <laughs> and you open the creaky doors now everybody yeah. in the cinema is going to turn and look at you yeah exactly uh, oh yeah i mean for if if you want some some decent fighting then it, it's it's worth checking out but you have to know going in that the story is poo the characters are just there i mean we i i think we're supposed to care about them because well you have somebody in peril it's a it's a bad guy against a, a good guy, and so you you're supposed to care about this, which I. Eh, but the bad guy movie. has no backstory whatsoever. No, he just like, wants to be in power. That's, he yeah. goes, I don't get to marry her. Fine, I'm going to kill everybody. <laughs> that's your that's yeah. your story. <laughs> yep, yep. I will rule by force. Then. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. okay, okay. Good Why didn't you. you just do that to begin with? Then yeah. I don't understand. I, uh, yeah. So yeah. anyway, yeah. But yeah, some of the fight sequences were really good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, the rest of my week, unfortunately, was was just um, followed suit. Yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of it wasn't it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't good. Mm. That was the thing. You know what I mean? Like it just I, I, I felt myself being um, like wastes wastes of time, mm. and which is unfortunate. So, yeah, whatever. Fingers crossed for next week. Yes, yes, there's a lot coming out, which we will discuss in our audio-only section in exactly. the podcast. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, uh, we thank you for watching this. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, Ruben with the Ruby Tuesday. I'm Chris with Movies and Munchies. You can always tweet at us at Best We Watched. Uh, we are on the Twitters there. Uh, we would like you to know, if you've never checked it out, Look at take a look at our Patreon opportunity, patreon.com slash thebeardedones. Uh, new content each uh, each week. We are this week going to be doing a special video where we are talking about a Stranger Things theory, which I'm excited for. Um, mm. But I think it could be I mean, well. I mean, I'm excited for the discussion, but the idea of it uh, could be really awesome. But I could also see it being just pissing everybody off. <laughs> so anyway. Um, um, yeah, so you could head over to Patreon, check that out. Um, with that, yeah, oh, yep, check out our podcast, which is going to contain uh, some entertainment news, the things we're looking forward to, general nonsense, stuff like that. Uh, we'll link it in the descriptions below, but you can also just head over basically to any podcast platform that you happen to listen to and check us out on there. Take us for a walk, take us while you're cooking dinner. Um, on your way to work, doesn't really matter. Just have two weirdos. In yeah, your listen ears. to us at work, and yeah, you know, while you're doing your spreadsheets, we will make the day go by faster. <laughs> I promise. There is a money back guarantee because you didn't spend anything. So, all right. <laughs> With that, we'll see you next week. Thanks. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>